Hi, this is Scott from Optics Realm. This is ZMAX tutorial number eight. I had a request come in on the YouTube channel to do a video on inserting a fold mirror. The, the user, I didn't understand the Asian letters, so I put it in Google Translate and it said it was Korean for delay night. If I didn't get that right, I'm sorry, but uh, thanks delay night for the, uh, the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. I've not prepared anything. I'm going to go kind of free flowing and I'm going to use a default lens and do it with a twist to show that you know when when doing tilts and decenters systems can become very complicated and there's I've seen other lens designers that understand the rules for tilts and decenters and sign conventions and what happens first. I generally don't know all those and I'm a little bit more of an experimentalist. I try something I look at the lens, I get feedback, and I, I just tweak it until it works. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that if you have the mental capacity to memorize all those rules and know everything in and out. Go ahead and do that, but when you're as, as easily distracted as I am, uh, it's, it's easier to just do an, an interactive approach to it. I'm going to use the default lens, sequential, objectives, um, kind of overuse the 28 degree uh, double gauss. Let's go with the Cook 40 degree. So here's the system as it ships with ZMAX. And I believe the fields are specified as an angle. I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to throw a little twist on it. I'm going to use image height. So the image height, as I circle over here, I can look in this, this window. <laughs> I need to double click. This window at the top it shows y equals 18.1 so I'm just going to do an image height a real image height of 18 and we'll do you know root 2 what is that um, I don't know we'll just do 10 so this changes a little bit here's our lens I'm going to close these out we don't really care about these let's clean this up hide care about these two columns. So here's our lens. What I propose we, we're going to do is put a fold mirror in between the lens and the image plane. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a couple surfaces. First off I'm going to insert one surface. I want to show you two different ways to insert this fold mirror. The first method, uh, let me step back, so we've got this, we're going to use surface 7 as this fold mirror. And actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say we'll put it 20 millimeters from the image plane. Now, if I just put in 20 millimeters, it's greatly out of focus. So what I'd like to do is subtract. I could either mentally do the math and say 22.208. Really, I'm lazy. I, I want to be able to just subtract 20 millimeters from this number. But to do that, I'm going to first show you how to add 20 millimeters. So let's add. You just do a plus. 20. So you see that's added 20 to the previous existing thickness. No, we don't want to add. That makes our defocus problem even worse. So I'm going to hit F3 and undo. We go back to 42. If I put just minus 20, essentially it changes the thickness to minus 20. We don't want minus 20. We want to subtract 20. I'm going to hit F3 and undo it again. So the way you do that is you do a plus minus 20. Now you see we get this 2208, and indeed now we have this fold mirror. I'm just going to save this as, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Uh, we're going to do temp. So this first method, we're going to go into the particular um, surface, double click standard, surface properties, and it usually comes up type. You've also got draw, aperture, scattering. We're going to do tilt and decenter we're going to say we're going to do tilt and decenter we're going to do tilt before the surface of 45 so let's just do this, we're going to do this stepwise oh, and this doesn't work, I need a 3D layout and as you'll see I always make that mistake so you can see the surface is tilting and of course we, uh, we're not reflecting, we really want a mirror, I forgot to put in mirror And of course, it's bombing out because 
uh, I've changed the the field, the the real image height. Now, I purposely change those, knowing that it's going to create this error because you may pull up a lens, you may have saved a lens that's say a finite conjugate, and you've specified the image height, and you start adding fold mirrors, and you get these errors, and you you, you know you got to like kind of troubleshoot that. So I purposely put this error in. Let's go ahead and go back to angle. And I forget what the field angle was. Um, let's just say 20. So now we've got this field angle in, and it is really bizarre what's going on. You know what? What, what do we have here? You have to be very careful with your the the thick the sign convention on your thicknesses after folds. After a single fold, or an odd integer folds your sign is going to change. So really this needs to be minus 20. Backspace, negative 20. And now you see, actually let me redo this and just point out, what's going on here is really the focus is up high, right? We're coming in, we're reflecting, your focus is up high here. But, and it should be negative 20. Since we're positive 20, sorry, since we're positive 20, we're tracing virtual rays. And if you project these virtual rays into real rays, you'll see that it does come to a focus, or just by putting positive 20. Now, of course, our image plane is completely out of whack. And that's because we've only done one tilt here of 45 degrees. Let's go back to this tab, tilt and decenter. We want to do another 45. We've done, uh, so we had a vertical plane here, we tilted it clockwise, which is a positive angle, 45. Now after reflection, we want to do another 45. So here we're going to do 45. And you'll see there's your fold mirror. Now things are getting really tight here. Um, I'm glad they didn't interfere, but things are getting very tight with this fold mirror. I just want to point out, when you use this tab, this tilt the center tab, in the surface number, there's this little plus to denote and show you, hey, you've done stuff on the tilt and decenter tab. Now I think we can, um, we can also, so after surface, we can call, we can do pickups and reverses. This is surface seven. Explicit pick up the surface, reverse the surface. I don't think this is going to work, but let's try it. So yeah, it, it does minus 40, it does the other, the other angle, minus 45, see minus 45, reverse, pick up, let's try this one. Okay, so there it is. So instead of entering two numbers, now you've got one number here, and we could say, well, let's go to 30 degrees. So now it's, it's tracking, and, and what you're going to see is we've got 30 degrees here, and then another 30 degrees after reflection. What this is doing is it's making sure that your image plane, the surface after, the image plane in this case, the surface after, it is perpendicular to your optical axis. Now, why would you not want to do this? Let us suppose... Let us suppose you've got some constraint here, and this image plane has to flip around, and you don't know. You're going to put this image plane at some orientation. You want to optimize this angle, the angle of this mirror, to meet those conditions. In this case, you've got no control codes on this. Now, maybe they're buried somewhere in ZMAX, and I just don't know where they are. I've not gone looking for them, because this is not the usual way to do tilts in these centers. You can't optimize it. Let's go back to our lens, temp, and this is not going to work because uh, this is a 2D layout. I need to go to the 3D layout, constantly doing that. What we're going to do is we're going to use a completely new surface that ZMAX provides for us called a coordinate break. This is the preferred recommended method for doing tilts and decenters. So what I've done is I've inserted a surface before and after our our mirror. We're going to come in and change surface 7 to a coordinate break. Uh, we're still in the tilt and decenter. We want to go back to type. You can either do the pull down. I like hotkeys. I hit C. Uh, and I hit C again until I find coordinate break. So now we have a coordinate break. And what it is, is it's 
decenter in x and y and tilt about x and y. I've also got a tilt about z, but for a rotationally symmetric system, that does nothing. So this is a tilt about the optical axes. Let's do a tilt about x of, well, first off, let's make this a mirror. Oh, and here I have this field problem again. Let's go back to uh, specifying it in terms of field angle, input field angle, 20 degrees. And as you can see, let's turn off this. Let, let's just let me hammer this point home. You'll probably get this, but I'm just going to show it again. We've got this mirror in place, and it looks like we're diverging, when in reality these are virtual rays on the other side of the mirror. We really want to change the sign, and the focus is somewhere here. So we go minus 20. Lo and behold, now you're, you're, you've got this fold mirror that's perpendicular to your optical axis. Your focus is out here somewhere. Let me add these other fields. So there's, there is our system. Let's, let's tilt this mirror 45 degrees. And I think we've got to do tilt about x. And again, I'm an experimentalist. So 45, and lo and behold, now you see your optical axis. And so after, at this surface, or at this coordinate break, this coordinate break is physically, we have a, a coordinate break physically right here. Now, Zmax knows not to draw it. We don't have to specify that. But at this, we tilt 45 degrees, and then we go um, out 20. Now, we go out 20 perpendicular to this fold mirror. So your image plane is that also at a 45 degree angle and the rays look completely wonky and weird. So what we have to do is actually put a fold also after. We have to put a coordinate break after the fold mirror. Double click standard, go CC coordinate break. And we're going to do, we have to do another 45. And now you can see in this case, um, why is this different than the other one? I think I know why. Notice the image plane, the image plane is drawing from here to here. So the center is about here. And the reason that's occurring is actually our coordinate break isn't right after the fold mirror. So if I were to draw it, you come in, there's a coordinate break on this side, and then we do a coordinate break on, on this side I was intending, but I didn't. I moved 20 millimeters. So in reality, what I want to do is this. I'm going to insert another surface. We're going to make the surface after the coordinate break the 20 millimeters. We're going to get rid of this. And voila. It, it is now it's showing the same thing when we used the um, tilted tab in the surface properties. But the rays are wonky. We're getting, we're getting some virtual rays here because of this dummy surface. So I highlight surface 10. You can see on the the layout this surface is highlighted red. So let's get rid of that. Let's not draw it. Do not draw the surface and I want to do more than that but I'm just going to show you. So now the surface isn't drawn but the rays are still there. We want to include skip rays and hide rays and voila you've got the same exact layout as you, um, using coordinate breaks as you did using the tilted and decentered tab on the surface properties. But now this angle is in the lens data editor in the LDE and I can make it a variable. Control Z, you see the V goes next to it here, or I can turn it off. So let, let us suppose, and you know what, I'm going to actually do a pickup. Let's say we want to vary this angle right here. Well in reality this surface, we, we just like we did on the tab, on surface properties, the tilt and decenter tab on the surface properties, I'm going to do a pickup here. We're going to say P for pickup or pull down. We're picking it up from surface 7, 45. So now this, this is picked up. We can change one single variable. We'll go to 30 degrees and we'll see we have the same exact layout as before. Now, what are, what are some other pitfalls? When you're doing tilts and decenters, you have to pay attention to where your global coordinate reference is. Because sometimes, if your global coordinate system isn't specified correctly, when you draw the lens, it's going to look weird. So for instance, I think right now the global coordinate is on this back surface. Let's just double check. We go to surface 6, double click, yeah, so it's grayed out. For instance, let's make this fold mirror the global coordinate reference. Okay, and now it, 
it draws the lens tilted, but this mirror, this fold mirror, not, uh, well, it, it, it draws it relative to the coordinates of the page. Let's do the image. Let's try the image plane. So you have to be very careful when you when you're specifying tilts and decenters and you're drawing it, you're using the, the lens layout, the 3D layout, you're using that for feedback. You have to be careful what your coordinate system is because it can lead you astray. The other thing on this 3D layout is it is this is truly 3D. So you can use first of all you can use the keyboard um, plus and minus or the keyboard arrows to rotate. So you can see I'm going out of plane. Or I can use the page up and page down to do the same thing. And if you lose track of where you are, these are all controlled. I thought there was controlled. Oh, rotation X, Y, and Z. We go back zero, go back zero, and we should back to, be back to where we were. So now we have, um, now we've got this 30 degree. And if you want to optimize, and you, you, I'm not going to go into how to constrain the merit function to control where this ray goes, suffice it to say, at some point down the line, we'll discuss that. If you want to optimize this angle, you can now come in and put the a control code, control Z, on this 30 degree angle. Again, I want to caution you that tilts and decenters, and if you have combinations thereof, can get very tricky very quickly. And you're going to be doing a lot of interactive, kind of, kind of playing a little bit. And if you don't like that, then I really encourage you to go read the ZMAX manual or check their online knowledge database. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, and have a good one.